Welcome to the Top Business Leaders Podcast. You'll learn how successful people just like you have grown their businesses, expanded their influence, and made money by writing a book. On each episode, you'll learn the inside secrets to help you create a book that can serve as a powerful marketing tool to skyrocket your business. I'm your host, Dan Janelle. I help thought leaders, business executives, and entrepreneurs write their books. To find out more and to download our show notes, go to topbusinessleaders.com. Hi, welcome to the Top Business Leaders Podcast. This is Dan Janelle, the author of Write Your Book in a Flash. Welcome. Today we have Lisa Anderson, who will talk to us about how she used her book to promote her business. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you. Lisa, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. So I am a business consultant. I work with manufacturers and distributors and help them create bold customer promises and profits simultaneously. And you recently wrote a book about a year ago. Tell us about that process. Why did you decide to write a book, first of all? Well, so I wrote a book called I've Been Thinking, uh, Turning Everyday everyday Situations into Profitable Opportunities. And I thought it would be a good way to convey some simple ideas with some actionable uh, to-dos. And, and it would help me grow my business and gain visibility. And you took an interesting approach in writing this book because it was created from your blog posts, correct? Correct. Well, I actually got this idea from my business partner in the Society for Advancement of Consulting, Linda Popke. Uh, she suggested that uh, she turned a, um, a bunch of newsletter articles that were providing value into a book. And when she mentioned that, it just gave me this great idea that it would be, why not do the same thing and uh, take it a step further and turn it into a uh, hardback book that I could give out to clients. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people listening are having an aha moment because they probably thought they had to sit down and come up with 20,000 original words to write their book. And here we have a very good example where you've taken 20,000 words you've previously written and turned them into a book. And I joke about 20,000 words. Tell us about that process. How many blog articles or posts had you written? How did you decide what to keep in the book and what to toss out? And how much editing did you have to do to the, uh, the, the posts that you used? Or else there are three questions. I'll go back <laughs> if you forget. <laughs> no problem. So Linda had said she did 101 uh, stories in her uh, ebook. So I thought 101 sounds like a good number. And I knew I had over 101 newsletter articles. Uh, so I uh, started by going through my old newsletter articles. I had probably 200. And so I started off by looking at which ones would be uh, like I put them into categories, at least in my mind, to start with, and thought, you know, I'd like to have a little bit of each category featured. And then I just went through and thought, which topics are of most interest and value to my clients? And so I started with those. And then I also tried for a little bit of diversity by having you know, multiple categories of uh, items and, or multiple categories of stories and including enough in, within each. Just so we can put some skin on the bones here, what were some of the categories that you came up with? Well, it's funny because I really didn't have any intention when writing the newsletter to put to, to rewriting them in categories, but it turned out that um, I wrote in several categories. So one of them was like a change management category, one was related to leadership, and then I had some technical topic categories like uh, sales and operations planning and uh, ERP system. So I um, looked at all the different topics I wrote about and I probably put it into between five and eight categories uh, and then looked across the board and I actually put in a little icon on some of the uh, on the pages that kind of relate back to the category. Did you have to rewrite any of them or did you basically take them and paste them into a book and you were done? Oh, definitely not. <laughs> Put them into a book and I'm done. Because, for many reasons. So, I thought it would be easier than it is, of course, to edit because it's always, it always appears easier than it really is in reality. But it wasn't. It was much more achievable than writing the book from scratch. 
um, which was great. So the way I had written my newsletters is I typically had a story, a client situation, or a news item, or like somewhere that I was visiting. So like a place that I happened to be visiting that was perhaps something like the Sydney Opera House. And I would talk about it and then I would relate it to business and I would end my newsletter with a takeaway. And what should we do about this within the next week? To, so that people like actually did something tangible. So that was the general format that I had, which I wanted to keep. However, they were of different sizes. I mean, they weren't vastly different, but you know, the difference between one and three pages, as an example, is a big difference. So one thing I had to do was edit them to be around the same size um, as each other so that we didn't have, to me it seemed like they should be at least within the ballpark of one another. And another thing I had to do was edit it to, uh, you know, I wrote some of these in the middle of the night when I was thinking about whatever the topic was, and they were they were good, but they needed to be in publishable <laughs> quality. So I uh, increased the quality on a few, and I also um, went through and looked at uh, what kind of examples I may have revised a few things here or there to make it more evergreen. Okay. When you say you have 101 blog posts in the book, how many words did that turn into and how many pages did that turn into? Well, I did not add up the words, at least not in, the, my, in, not in my current memory. However, it turned into a the size book of a paperback book that a, um, you know, that would be a commercially published book. However, I, what I did is I had each each uh, of the 101 stories with action items was between one and two pages because it was a, the front of the page and the back of the page. And typically speaking, I think that they all went into the back of the page. It's just how far into the back of the page. So it's 101 times so know, one point something. <laughs> 250 words minimum yeah. to a maximum of 500 words. Yeah, Probably. exactly. Okay, great. Did you self-publish the book, or did you go to a traditional publisher? I self-published the book. T talk about that. Uh, why did you decide to do that? And we'll go into the steps. So prior to writing this book, uh, I'm in the, the somewhat unique position, I suppose, of having a couple of, um, what do we call them? Uh, well, we'll call them people. A couple <laughs> of people come to me saying, would you like to write a book for us? Um, two or three um, that came saying they were interested in me writing a book and actually Wiley had asked for a book as well which that I did put together a book proposal for um, and so I just I thought it would be a really laborious process and so I just I just really never got to it so one of the things that uh, compelled me to um, to do this project is is that it sounded so much more doable without up you know, upearthing my uh, business and um, making me into a full-time writer. So I thought it was much more achievable. Um, and so that's why I went forward with it. Although you'll have to remind me about why I was telling you that story. Because what, what did you ask me? So I'm not I, sure I, I fully you, answered it. I, I asked you, if you why you decided to self-publish. Oh, okay. So that's the reason that I decided to write the book. And then, you know, I really didn't want to have to deal with a publisher who may have their own ideas of how to do this and you know I was really doing 101 chapters in essence short chapters that may not really fit into what a commercially published book would typically be uh, and so I thought why go through this effort um, the idea here is to get it in the hands of clients potential clients and to people who might find it valuable uh, to gain visibility and to share knowledge that I found and to share really some travels and like how you can turn even just everyday things into um, something that's like a you know profitable opportunity or you know like a, a way to make a customer happy so I thought it would just be easier if I self-published it so that's why that's why I chose the self-publishing route so okay. I don't actually know if they would have published it or not they might have but I didn't even try Okay, that's fair, and it also reinforces uh, a lesson that I teach in my classes, and that is that the book is a big business card. It's meant to get you new business because you'll make a lot more money uh, getting a project than by selling a book. So tell us about your marketing. How did you get into the hands of the right people? 
Well, I think you can always improve upon that, <laughs> right? But uh, what I did is is that um, when the book came out, I ordered, I've ordered you know thousands of copies from Amazon. So I did it through Amazon's Create Space, and I did I didn't literally do it all myself. Um, I had a uh, marketing uh, expert that I was working with to post blogs and some other things who uh, helped with the formatting, or we outsource uh, some of it so that it was. You know, getting it into their format was, you know, a trick. <laughs> so once we got to, to that point, you know, I ordered um, several copies and I sent sent some to all clients and key contacts. Uh, and I also talked about it in speeches and uh, brought it to speeches. I still bring it to new clients and I bring it to prospective clients. And I bring it uh, when I'm doing speeches and uh, usually have them give away a couple copies of the book um, for a speech kind of thing. So it's really how to get it. It's more about getting it into um, uh, the hands of potential buyers, but also people who are, who are just interested and they could pass the word on. When you send the book to a potential buyer, what else do you send with it so they'll open the book? So usually what I'll do is I'll send a note card. Uh, and in the note card, I'll write a note, <laughs> I guess, obviously, about, uh, you know, like, I'm, you know, I'm sending you this book. You know, I thought of you. It depends on the situation, right? With some buyers, I might have thought of them related to a certain chapter when I was writing the book. Or I might be thinking that they're in, they might be interested in a certain um, section, so I might point that out. Or I'll just say, you know, I thought you might be, you know, interested in, you know, a variety of topics. And, uh, you know, let me know what they think. You know, if they have any ideas or feedback that they'd like to provide, I can always put them into uh, future future books. And how has that worked for you? Uh, great, great. I mean, I think, you know, I had several people, you know, I had several people respond really positively that are fans mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway. So that's, but that's great. You know, I had one, um, he's not a client, but he's a, a CEO. And um, he was just, like, lovely because he... Um, got the book and he um, he actually bought you know like 10 or 20 more so that he could give them to all of his friends and he even did a little a picture with him holding the book and you know everything so I mean, he was great mm -hmm. <laughs> from that point of view but I had you know had fans like that that you know just went you know way over and beyond uh, I also had people who most people would at least respond and say that they appreciated receiving it some of them would say Oh, I really enjoyed something about it, um, and others would, you know, just, uh, you know, like it would come up in conversation or something. So it's really kind of varied, but I think it's just one of many things that uh, I do that uh, circles back when they're thinking about me. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let's go back to self-publishing for a few minutes. Um, when you self-publish, you, you, you become the general manager, the general contract. Mm -hmm. You have to find proofreaders, copy editors, layout, designers, whatever. How, how did you find those people? Well, so I had a source in terms of the person that I utilized for some marketing support. And so we leveraged her contacts. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, part of the reason that I'm involved in Alan Weiss's community and that uh, in the Society for Advancement of Consulting is, is that... There's plenty of resources for um, potential authors and for for authors, and you know, for other purposes too. But since we're talking about books, how do you how do you write the book? How do you publish the book? How do you make sure that you actually can um, make the book pay off for you over time? So, from that point of view, I leveraged my contact base, which which is comes from many areas, but I think probably the the, the two most uh, helpful comes from the Society for Advancement and Consulting and from my marketing resource that had a lot of these types of contacts in her um, Rolodex or at least knew, um, knew where to find them. Okay. Um, knowing what you know now, what do you wish you knew when you first started this project? Well, that's a really good question. I think that one of the things that I wish I knew was you know, I actually, I don't wish that I knew what would be involved because <laughs> I think Linda was absolutely correct. It was a great idea to repurpose material, revi you know, revise it, edit it, make it, um, make it better. Uh, 
but it's a quick way. I mean, that's one of the th really nice things about self-publishing and um, writing your book without having to account for any other outside parties is, is that you can do it quickly. So actually, there's somebody in uh, my strategy group uh, of consultants who did the same thing. He self-published a book, and he did it, he pretty much wrote it in a, in a week, which is pretty amazing. However, with that said, he did a lot of preparation, so he may have spent the same amount of time as me. He mm -hmm. just did it in a different way. Um, but I think, you know, the ability to uh, have something quickly is really valuable today. Okay. Do you think the book has helped you get more business? Yeah, I think what it is is that it's definitely helped in terms of growing my business. It's, I think that uh, from this point of view, Alan Weiss is absolutely correct. There's a marketing gravity approach where you have, you have a book. You have book is way better than a business card, mm -hmm. but you have a book. You have you're doing speeches. I do a bunch of uh, in-person relationships, uh, networking, and um, attend events and those kinds of things. And what I find is is that. A book is um, is way better than a business card, and it absolutely is. It makes potential clients and prospective clients uh, more interested in you because they're like, "Oh, well, that's interesting." Uh, you've they you know they flip through the book and they also see they're going to find something in my book that's going to be of interest to them because I have lots of different topics, and if they're interested in travel, I've got that, and it's just tying it always back to business. So they. Um, they, they seem to really enjoy it. I mean, of course, they don't read the whole book before I see them, but it just makes them makes me more of an object of interest, really. Exactly. So it's all part of the marketing strategy. Right. Good. Do you have any final words or any tips for anyone, any executives or, and thought leaders who are thinking about writing a book? Should well, one of the things that uh, I wasn't sure about when I wrote the book was whether 101 short chapters was going to be like something that was really a good idea or not. I mean, it would be a good idea for an ebook, but I wasn't sure if it would really work for a book. However, I have received feedback from a lot of executives saying that they really like the short chapters because every day, you know, these days with the Amazon effect, which is one of those things that I talk a lot about in my consulting practice, but everybody wants everything quickly, you know, like, even before they think of it would be better <laughs> <laughs> and you know they want 24 7 access and all those kinds of things so it allows them to just pick it up and turn to the chapter heading that's really a challenge for them or that they if they get a new idea at a conference most likely there's something in the book they can turn to so the short chapters is something they can get through really quickly and I mean it takes no time at all and then they walk away with an idea and so it's memorable in a short, short, uh, in short bursts, if you will. So I think that it's really turned out to be uh, uh, successful from that, from that, you know, um, angle. Excellent, and that's something I teach in my classes as well. Is that people read a book to solve a problem, and they don't need to see the entire encyclopedia about right. that problem or about that <laughs> issue. It would right. give them 500 words about that that show that you can be a trusted leader who can take them from mess to success. Then you can use your book to help to build your business. Thank you very much, Lisa Anderson, for being a guest on Top Business Leaders. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you. Great. Thank you. I enjoyed uh, talking with you. Thanks for listening to Top Business Leaders, the only podcast that shows you exactly how people just like you have built their businesses by writing a book. If you'd like to write your book but don't know where to start, you can find great information at writeyourbookinaflash.com. Thanks again for listening. We'll be back next week with another insightful interview to help you become a top business leader.